Hey everyone, it's Bethany and in this tutorial we are going to be doing a little bit of canvas art with a canvas and some HTV and a frame. So I um, found a really cute little saying that I loved and um, I want to make it for my kids' little bathroom. So I thought this would be a really fun little project and I've had a couple um, supplies sitting around that have been needing a little craft. So I'm going to be using a variety of different things that I have had laying around and we're going to just bring them all together to create some beautiful art. So in this project, we are actually going to be using HTV. So we're going to iron on um, this canvas here. So I have an eight by 10 canvas and so I'll unwrap that. And then I found this frame. Um, I'm not going to be doing a um, reverse canvas in this tutorial, but stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed if you are new here because we're going to be doing um, a reverse canvas in the weeks ahead. So um, that is coming up. I know some of you have been really wanting me to do that. So for this um, tutorial though, I did find this frame at Hobby Lobby in their clearance section and it's originally $20 and I got it for $4.99 and it was this um, bare wood but it had like spackled paint all over it so it was on super clearance and what I did was I took some of my favorite chalk paint um, and then I put three coats I believe, three coats on there and then I distressed it with an electric sander just to give it a little bit of um, worn look and I just really like that look. So I'll link my paint that I use down below. It's my favorite paint. It's my favorite chalk paint and I use it on everything. So I got this looking just how I want it. I didn't paint the back because I'm just going to be hanging it up but um, it looks perfect and I got all the insides. So that is what we're going to be using. I um, decided not to do a reverse canvas on this one because I really wanted a bulky and intentional frame and if you've seen reverse canvases they're very very pretty um, but the frame is pretty thin so I really wanted something a little bit more intentional and um, a frame that was going to be really big and sturdy and um, just big and fun so um, that's what I'm going to do so in the end it's going to um, go in just like this but we'll get there so that's kind of where I'm going with this project so other things you're going to need are we're going to use three different colors of HTV my HTV um, is going to be the Caesar Easyweed so I have a nice pretty pale blue a pale pink and then I have a bright pink so these are kind of the colors my girls have a really cute um, shower curtain that is pom-pom and it's so cute. I got it when my first was just a brand new baby because it was so girly and fun. Um, so some of the colors are in that little pom-pom shower curtain so that is why I chose these colors but you can choose whatever you'd like. And then we're going to use the mini easy press. I brought out some um, tape that is heat resistant and um, I think that might come in handy for this. Sorry if I sound a little sleepy. It's 5 a.m. here so I'm just now kind of getting back into my routine of getting up and crafting early in the morning so um, I'm just still waking up and I need some coffee. Um, and then measuring tape to measure everything and scissors, weeding tool, and then we're going to use our glue gun to attach our canvas to our frame. And then for the mini easy press part we are going to just need a little towel just to kind of build up this back area for pressing so I just grabbed just a tiny little um, washcloth and then we're using the joy today so I know you guys are super excited about the joy so I was trying to decide this morning if I was going to bring the maker out or if I would use the joy but I know you guys are so excited and a lot of you have just gotten your joy so I will do a demonstration with this project with the joy today Okay, so we don't really need to measure anything quite yet because the canvas that we're using, well, I guess we could kind of tuck this in here and just make sure we know the usable area. So we know our canvas is eight by 10, but are we actually gonna be able to use all of that is the question. So good thing we measured. So we are gonna be able to use seven and three quarters by nine and three quarters. So. Um, okay, I'm really thankful I measured that because I would have gotten my design too big. So seven and three quarters by nine and three quarters. Um, so make sure you put your canvas inside your frame or whatever you're doing. Um, make sure your frame is on so that you can measure that inside area to know what usable space you have. So let's go ahead and hop into design space. I'll show you the design that we are going to use. We're going to make it together and then we'll get it all cut out with the HTV and get the um, mini easy press on and everything. Everything is going to turn out really cute, I think. I think I'm really excited to see how all of this um, comes together. 
Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space, and this is the little sign that I'm going to make. So it says, wash your hands and say your prayers because Jesus and germs are everywhere. And I love this. I think this is so cute, um, and I love the idea of it. So um, this is not an original idea. It was found on Pinterest, um, and I just loved the little quote. I think it's really going to be cute for a kid's bathroom. So um, what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and recreate this for you guys. So I'll leave this up so you guys can kind of see where we're going, but I'll recreate it so you guys know how to take every step to make this look just the same as mine, if you want to. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the shape box and I'm going to recreate my canvas. So the first one over here, this is an 8 by 10 so I'm going to make my second one a little bit smaller by unlocking it, and I'm going to go with a width of 7.75 by 9.75, and those were, whoops, 9.75. And that was what we measured. So this is going to be what is going to be usable within the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and make this white. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start adding all of my words. So I'm going to go ahead and add all my words and elements, and then I'll show you how I um, make them all pretty and get them all ready for the canvas. So the first text I'm going to use, I'm just going to go over to the text box, and it's going to be feather. And I got this on font bundles a couple weeks ago, I believe, and it was a free download at the time. And again, I'm just making this sign for personal use. So we're going to do wash. I'm going to do all of the words with, um, that are using this same font, um, at the same time. Whoops. So wash and say, and because Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to also make sure that, um, let's see, I'm going to make sure that everything is given its own text box. Um, so I like to add separate text box for each line because it just helps me when spacing and designing. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go into images and grab this banner. So I just typed in banner into the search engine and this is the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one more text and this last text is called Four Seasons Home Decor. Okay, and then this one is going to be for your hands. I believe this is just a Cricut font, Cricut Access font. So I'm just going to put this over to the side, whoops, just like that. Okay, and then the and sign. I love this and sign. It is so cute. And even if I'm not using this font and I need an and sign, I make sure to grab um, grab it from this font because it's so cute. Okay, just say your prayers and then period. And again, just adding everything so that I can then work with it and make it pretty in just a second. Jesus and germs. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to start with this feather font and it's supposed to be a script font where they're all together and um, flowing into one another. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click ungroup and it takes it from being grouped as a word to being grouped as individual letters. So then this allows me to move each individual letter together. So I can just place those where I want them. That looks great. And once I've done that, I can go ahead and click um, select everything and select weld and then that will make sure that they print all together as one file so you'll see now they're not individual letters anymore in the um, in the oh my goodness sorry you guys it's 5 a.m. in my at my house right now so I'm trying to get back into the mode of getting up early to um, do tutorials again but I'm a little sleepy too so I'm gonna have to get some coffee pretty soon um, but in the panel over here you'll see that it is one um, file again so I'll go ahead and then bring that over here and then the next thing I'm going to do is I will go ahead and unlock this and I'm going to make this a little bit wider. So unlocking it allows you just to kind of move things around without having the length and width stay constant. So you can, you know, either um, change the length without the width or vice versa. So that looks about good. And the next thing I'm going to do with your hands is I'm going to make it obviously a little bit smaller. I'm going to drag it over 
and then I am going to use the curve feature and I'm just going to curve so that everything kind of um, flows, the words kind of flow with that ribbon banner a little bit. So once I've done that, what I can do is I can make it a little bigger if I want and just kind of keep fiddling with it. Um, and then I can rotate it a little bit. That looks pretty good. Okay. So now, and is easy peasy. We can just bring it on over. Say again, we're going to ungroup and we're going to drag those letters together. You can also, um, do the letter spacing, um, just to drag those letters together very easily with one click. But I always find that I end up having to do the ungrouping and dragging anyway. So I just go ahead and start there. Okay. And then again, just following my original design, I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. And those are going to overlap a little bit, which is just fine. Looks good. And then continuing on, I'm just going to go ahead and ungroup these and bring them together. Okay and then weld. Okay, so now don't forget to weld those together because if you don't, um, then they're all gonna cut separately and then that defeats the whole purpose. It, it's just gonna be a mess, so make sure you weld those back together. Whoops. Sometimes I always grab the wrong one and then, come here, I kinda have to start over. Let me just grab it from there, there we go. Okay. A little bit smaller okay and then Jesus and germs are a tad smaller actually they might be a tad bigger so you can just go ahead and use any fonts you want use any saying you want um, do any kind of spacing that you would like anything that you want um, this is just what I chose to do but this is um, just the design that I like but make sure you you know tweak it if you want to use the same um, idea you can use different fonts and different little graphics so anything you like that's what is so fun about crafting is that you can put your own personal spin on your own design um, so be sure to do that. And I'm just going to real quick finish this one up. So I'll just weld those together. And then what I'll do is I will size it down just a little and drag it on over. Oh, I guess I can size that back up. <laughs> okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all my little elements on here if it's going to let me. Okay. And I'm just going to, whoops, I'll have to drag the other one in a second. I'm just going to center that a little bit. I like to have a lot of negative space around my design from the design to the edge of the frame because I think it looks more intentional. Um, so do it however you would like, but I think that it looks better if you you know, don't make your design as big as your canvas. Just give yourself some space. Okay, so now I'm gonna select everything and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to align and I'm gonna say center horizontally and it just centers everything. And now I'm going to make everything the color I want it. So this first color, I'm gonna make that dark pink. So let me see if I can find something similar. That looks good. So I'll go through and I will just make all of the words that I want, dark pink, dark pink, that way the Cricut then knows where, um, which letters need to go on which mat with which color. Okay. And then I'm going to, we can't do a project without blush. You guys know it's my favorite. So I'm going to go ahead and grab, let's see, we'll grab a light pink. Looks about right. And we'll do and, and because, and again, you can use any colors you'd like. These are the colors that my husband helped me pick out um, for the girls' bathroom. They have a, I hope I didn't say this already, I might have. Um, they have a really cute pom-pom 
um, shower curtain that's so pretty and it's very girly and frilly and these colors are some of the colors that are in there and so it looks really really neat and this is gonna match really nice okay so I think that is how I want it so now what you can do is you can um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one that way we're not looking at it twice so I'm gonna go ahead and delete what you can do is you can um, weld your weld or attach your common colors together so that they cut exactly the same and so that the spacing is just right but I want to save some vinyl so I don't want to do that so what I'm going to do is I am going to um, only attach I guess I can attach this and and the banner together because they're right next to each other so we can have those cut the same okay so now what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and hide the canvas because we don't need the Cricut cutting out any um rectangles we just need the um the words so now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure the joy is selected you can use any cutting machine for this project you can go ahead and click make it and then what we'll do is we will just say with a mat because we are using non smart materials again we're using Caesar easy weed and so for this part what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make sure everything is on here the way we want it so we're gonna save as much vinyl as we can we are going to mirror our every layer so this looks good I might bring that down just a tad actually yeah just a little bit just to give me myself a little bit of space and turn the mirror on and same for this one, just kind of drag that out a little bit to give myself a little bit of space and turn mirror on. So just remember to obviously turn mirror on and um, be sure to make sure that you can also, you know, move these around if you need to. Um, that's one of the great freedoms that I really like to have just to help preserve some of the final mat materials I have. So, um, or HTV, I guess in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue and it's going to locate our joy via Bluetooth. And then we're going to be able to select our material. So we are using the Caesar easy weed and the closest, um, material to this is the everyday iron on. Um, oh, did I hit matless cutting? Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on. Sorry, guys. It's time to pour my coffee. So let me, let's see. We are doing on the mat. I think I even said that. And then I remember telling you guys that we were not using matless cutting, but okay, there we go. Did it still make everything? Oh, now it kind of moved everything around. That's okay. This is a good learning, learning experience. Okay. And then we'll do, we'll do it like this. So I can't believe I clicked that <laughs> matless cutting when I told you I wasn't going to. Early mornings can be tricky sometimes. Okay. So now let's double check mirror is turned on and we didn't bother that. We didn't. Okay, good. Okay, so now again, we're going to connect to the Bluetooth and we'll go ahead and select our material. So the easy, the quickest um, setting to Caesar Easy Weed, in my opinion, is the Everyday Iron On. So I'm going to click select that. And then um, it's going to remind us to make sure mirror is turned on, which we can double check on each layer. I like to double check this like 300 times because I don't want to waste material and I have done that before. Um, and then it's going to make sure that our material is face shiny side down on the mat, which you guys will watch me do when I load the mat. So it's going to use a fine point blade. I'm going to use default pressure and we can load our um, mats up with our Caesar easy weed and get it cutting in the join. And I'm Okay, so now I have my mat out and I went ahead and I just um, sized down with my paper trimmer. I went ahead and made all of the little sizes for my HTV. And so it's calling for this nice blush color first. Um, and I will just go ahead and place that on the mat. And then we'll just use the little brayer tool just to get it all nice and down now remember if I sneak in some tools um, throughout the video just be sure to always utilize the description box below the video which I know a lot of you really love um, so go ahead and do that and then you'll be able to see and locate what um, I've been using okay so now I'm just gonna load the mat and it's going to just pull it in and make sure everything's aligned and then I can go ahead and click go when it's ready so that's gonna go ahead and start cutting the first piece for us and then we can go ahead and load the other pieces and get everything cut out. Okay, so we can unload the first one. 
and it looks really cute. I'm excited to see how this all comes together. So the next um, piece it's calling for is this nice blue color. And put that right on the mat and load. This is a very lather, rinse, repeat step. You're just gonna keep loading and cutting and then we'll get everything weeded out. So in the meantime, what you can do is to save additional material, you can just, um, being careful, um, cut around your design. That way you know um, where your design is and where you're cutting. Um, and then you can save the additional scrap um, each TV. Okay, so I can bring in my little bye-bye bin here. This is just going to help me keep my workspace all clean while I weed. And um, I like to start weeding while everything's cutting just because it can start the process um, and get everything moving quickly. So now what we're going to do is we are just going to weed out our design. This one is a little because. And weeding is just taking away anything that you don't intend to use in your design. So the background, um, the little middles of the letters, so you'll just weed all of those out. Okay, so our first little word because is all ready and I'll zoom in um, in just a second when everything is done cutting so that you guys can really see everything. Um, this one is done, so cute. Okay, and then the last one is the pink piece. We'll just get that down and cutting and we'll be really ready. Okay, so then this piece is the banner. Sometimes I have to kind of offer it up as an angle a little bit and um, let's see, click go, so I can really see what I am weeding. I love this little banner. I think little things like, um, little graphics like this just really help to make it more visually interesting. So this is the only part of the design that we attach together. So you'll see that once I get done with this, I'll, I'll lift it up, but I'm just going to get the inside of the scanner, but you'll see that the little and, um, cut exactly where we attached it to the banner, which makes it really, really nice because those two pieces can just lay down together. They're already, um, you know, put together and looks great okay so then there's that one okay so we'll just kind of start laying these out and then we'll grab this little guy and cut away our you want to make sure you cut away the material you want to save before you weed because once you weed it it um it's toast it's done so you want to make sure everything is all your little pieces are saved before you get to weeding. So this has three different lines on it, but I'll weed them all together and then we will cut them apart um, after. Sometimes it's easier to do it that way because then you can really see where you can cut. So it's definitely a safe bet. Okay, and our last little guy is all done. I love this pink color. It is super super fun i think it'll, i think all these colors actually go super well together too so i'm just going to cut away my scraps before weeding and then let's go ahead and zoom you guys in so we can finish this last little piece and then get started okay so you're all zoomed in and i took the opportunity to go grab some little liquid wakey wakey or coffee okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to weed this last little piece. Again, I just like to kind of pierce the corner and then pull. And HTV is so easy to weed, you guys. It's, it's really, really nice. It's a lot easier than vinyl and it's a lot, um, well, it's similar to vinyl, but it's more forgiving than vinyl. Vinyl, you know, it's, you have to really make sure you don't weed out the wrong thing or, or that the wrong thing doesn't pull up. The HTV is pretty pretty forgiving in that it's kind of stays put. So just grab all the other little pieces. This part is the Jesus and germs and the wash and say, so just the last little piece of our puzzle. So I really like having this little, you guys know, if you guys have been with me a while, you guys saw me make this and I'll link it for you guys. Um, 
I really like having a desktop trash can for HTV especially because HTV gets, as you can see as I'm like trying to get it off things, it can cling really easy. See? Um, and so it can kind of get everywhere and you want to make sure it's like really dry out too. <laughs> Um, you want to make sure that you keep your workspace clean and you don't have any lingering pieces because once you go to turn on your heat and you start pressing your HTV to your project, if any of those little pieces get on your project, they will iron on. So, you know, it's a really easy way to ruin your project. So if you can at all try to find a way to contain your HTV during the weeding process, you are going to really be thankful for that. Eek. Everything wants to just cling to me right now. Okay, so let me just grab the middles of everything. I think I have everything ready to go. So one best practice, I always say this in my videos, but I think it's really um, beneficial to build it into your workflow, is that I like to personally take my weeding tool and just kind of drag it over the letters lightly. And then this just kind of helps my eye make sure I look at each and every letter to make sure everything is weeded out. So now this is why I sometimes find it's easier just to cut away once we have it weeded because you can really see in between the letters and everything is just a little bit easier to cut. I think I had a little bit of extra on that last one too that I can cut away. Okay, so now we are ready. Let's go ahead and preheat our little mini easy press. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and turn it on and I'm gonna preheat it to medium heat and we'll see how that works. So let's gonna go ahead and preheat. I'm excited. Okay, so now once um, everything is done, you can just remove this from your workspace. It makes it immediately clean. And I'm going to just double check my hands because sometimes that likes to cling to my hands, the HTV does. And then one wonderful thing about HTV, and I'll tell you, um, if you're doing a project like this where you're using multiple colors, multiple, um, you're going to be stacking things, HTV is really the way to go because you can um, go ahead and lay it down, get this all... You can lay it down and bring it up as many times as you want. Unlike vinyl, vinyl, once you get it down, you have to be pretty careful because it's going to want to stick. Um, so with HTV, it's really forgiving. You can, you know, lay it down and bring it back up. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start just putting everything on my canvas and I'm going to bring up the little image in design space for myself so I can just monitor and reference that as I go. Okay, so the Easy Press is preheated, so it turns green once it's ready to go, and it gives a really cute little chime. Um, and now I'm just going to look at my design and just kind of see where everything needs to go. So I'm just going to start placing things on. I love the colors together. My husband helped me pick out the color. Well, I picked out the colors, and then, no, did he help me? Maybe I narrowed it down. I think it's sort of the green I had like a teal and he was telling me the blue was really good and I, I had agreed for sure. That's kind of where I was leaning. Okay, and then be sure you can cut away little pieces as you go too. Okay, wash. I'm doing this backwards, which was not really a great idea because now I have to say it backwards. And then see how this little piece is going to just kind of overlap a little bit? Okay. Wash your hands and this piece will go down together. I need to grab my little guy off of there though. I'll kind of just place this on the side here. Whoop. See, this is how HTV it just kind of saves the project here because it just gets it all easy to pull back up if you need to and we'll do wash okay so now that we kind of have it all on there what we can do is just start you know placing and pulling and measuring so this is where measuring tape is going to come in handy for sure okay that's looking just about just about right so i think i'm going to measure 
the banner because that's a big piece so one and a half and over just a little bit okay a little over one and a half and a little oh that's perfect okay so that one is good to go and then I think I will measure the R everywhere so I like to measure my biggest pieces and we'll probably end up measuring all of them as we go. It's one and a quarter. I can go over a little bit. So one and a half and one and a half. Okay, so I think I am just going to kind of start getting started here. So everything looks really good to me in terms of spacing. Looks good. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of start going slow. So I'm going to first and foremost get my little towel to go under. So you want to build up that little surface because it's hollow in the back. So you want to build up that surface so you have something to press on. Okay, so I think I'm going to start with this R everywhere at the bottom and then go from there. So I'm just going to remove this Jesus and germs and because. And feel free, you guys, to do this however you like. Um, the best answer is whatever makes you most confident. For me, going in smaller size chunks um, really helps me just to kind of take things slow. Um, so that's how I'm going to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my little press here and I am going to do about, let's see, let's do like 15 seconds. And then what you do with the little mini press is you um, just do small little circles. Another thing about um, canvas is you want to make sure you're your hands are clean because it's um it is you know more of a fabric so you want to make sure that you are not getting anything like if, like if you have makeup or anything on your hands that will just come right off and um get your canvas all dirty so just make sure your hands are nice and clean so one of the reasons also that i decided to work with htv for this project is because um it's going to be going in a bathroom and bathrooms tend to get m a lot of moisture and a lot of steam so i thought htv might just be a little bit better that looks really good um i thought htv just might be a little bit better in with um you know standing up against moisture and steam that comes off from showers and stuff Okay, so that one's done, and I am going to let that cool, and I'm going to go ahead and start the next one. Okay, so we'll do Jesus and Germs, and take our time with finding, that is one and three quarters, and that is not quite, so let's move that over. A little over one and a half and a little over one and a half we're going for it okay so we'll just do the next one the mini easy press is going to be a like saving grace for something like this because you can go individually you could also you know what i never even ended up using my heat tape so that's okay i brought it out because i kind of thought that it would come in handy but i'm not really finding a need for it but if you feel like you want to use it then totally do that um if you were going to press this all at once then i would definitely like if you're going to use a bigger press i would definitely do the heat tape just to make sure that everything stays at the same time but if you're doing it in little sections like this you're kind of only worrying about one line at a time and it's you know it's visually easy just to monitor that on your own so just grab this next one we have gotten very good at hand washing at our house and ironically both of our kids have been potty training well roughly before this so that adds another set of little hands to constantly wash at you know at certain times of the day too because they're gonna they're doing all that and 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and try to peel this first little layer. Oh, it looks good. Easy peasy. If you sense any give or anything um, from the, uh, you know, the HTV, if it's feeling like it's not wanting to lay down, then just go ahead and replace this little piece. So keep these pieces until you're certain that your design is laid down, because if not, you'll just replace it on top and then you can just reheat it up and see if that helps. And it will. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm kind of letting these cool down to more of a warm peel. So now I'll just keep going up. So we'll do because, and I think I need to do a little bit of, whoops, a little bit of trimming just to fit it there. So because we'll go right here. Let's see here. Get up a little bit. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and measure. That is at a little over two and a half and a little over two and a half. We'll go ahead and do that. And this one um, is, and I still have my sheet. It's, I, another reason is to kind of keep a sheet on that one below is because um, it will protect it once you go to do the next one. So you don't want to put your iron on um, bare HTV. So you always want to have a protective layer on there. So again, just some steady circles. So this is working really good at that medium pressure and I'm doing about 10 to 15 seconds. I'm honestly kind of forgetting to count, but it's feeling just about that, right about there. And just constant movement is what the Easy Press, Mini Easy Press likes. Unlike the, um, you know, big easy press that's over here, that is just, you just set it down. Okay, that looks really good. So I'm just going to kind of keep working up from there. Keep, you know, lining up and measuring and pressing. So I'll keep working on that. And this one will do a little bit of a um, layering, so... It's also nice halfway through if you kind of want to just make sure everything's still lining up, which it is. So, okay, still looking great. Okay, so I'll just keep working on that and then show you the final product. So for the say, that is going to go over, um, just kind of overlap the prayers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to overlap that there. I think it look really cute. I think I had it over just a little bit. And then what I'll do is I will go ahead and replace the transfer tape um, over your prayers just to protect it as I as I um press the say part. So that is almost a three. And that is oops, I just moved it. Goodness. Actually, I'm glad that that happened because I don't know that I have that quite straight. So blessing in disguise. Okay. Let's see here again. Three and... Okay, that was a blessing in disguise because it wasn't straight and it wasn't in the center. So now I can just go ahead and do that 10 to 15 seconds with constant movement. Um, actually, I need to get this kind of repositioned because I had it kind of at the bottom. Now we can kind of work at the top. Okay, there we go. That towel is actually working out really nice. So I was kind of wondering how I was going to do that. Um, and that worked out really, really good. Okay. And one of the things you can notice is when you see some bubbles appearing on the HTV, um, that's a good sign that it's, that it's, you know, sticking and, and heated properly. So you can just look there. And then once you see those, if you're worried about, you know, how much time to place down on there. Okay. So now for this one, we are going to do the banner. Let's see, how are we going to do this? Nope. We're not going to do the banner first. We are, no, we'll do the banner first. Yep. Sometimes you have to think through when you're layering. Okay, I want to make sure that my spacing is still good. It is. It's looking really nice. Okay. Go ahead and take 
this layer off. Oh, that looks good. It looks really good layered or, um, you know, overlaid on that. The say in that your prayers looks really good. Okay. Make sure that's nice and straight. Okay, and then we are at a little over one and a half and a little over one and a half. Perfect. Okay, so I just want to make sure, let me hold this up to myself. Pardon me for a second. I just want to make sure that I have that, I have it even from the sides, but I want to make sure it's straight looking on. All right. Okay, so we can go ahead and peel that off. And then we'll just go ahead and place your hand. So I'm gonna trim this down a little bit. Okay, and then place that right inside. Oh, that looks really good the first time down. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place my other one right over it. Okay. So now that one. Be careful. Yep, looks great. Okay, so now we just have our final little piece. So we'll just... One thing you want to be careful with the mini is just being careful on the canvas part. Um that you don't like over rub on it because it can like make it like get marks on it um so you just want to be careful try to keep your it's hard but you want to try to keep your press on the um carrier sheet as much as you can just because you can kind of get like little rough marks on your nice white canvas i think that looks really good check maybe move that over just a hair Okay. and it's our last piece so I'll go ahead and and do that one and we will be ready to glue our frame onto our canvas so we'll get to see the final result this is gonna look really pretty okay so that's all done so we'll just let that kind of cool a little bit again you can just kind of do like a warm peel um, with uh, Caesar Easy Weed, you can actually do a hot or cold peel. So I just kind of do a warm peel and, and it looks great. Okay, so it's all done. How cute is that? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to get the frame um, around it. So this is going to look really cool. And I think it's going to look really pretty. I love the distressed look too. I'm really glad that I decided to do that sanding. I do that on all my projects, but... Um, it looks really, really good with this one because it was that dark wood underneath. So it, that wood is showing through. It looks really good. Okay, let me tidy up just a little bit. We can go ahead and turn our easy press off and then we will get to gluing our um, frame. Okay, so my hot glue is heated up and I have my extra glue stick just in case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over. Now remember, you can... Um, do this however you want. So if there's another way that you prefer to do it, then definitely go ahead and do that. And you take that little um, sticker off too. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just go ahead and do a little bit of glue, just a little, cause I don't want it to come out, um, the edges. Just a little, I'm trying to go fast too, so that I don't dry it okay so being mindful to not put a you know, huge amount on there I just want a little bit and I'll lay that down in there looks really good and then I'm just gonna hold that in there okay so that's holding pretty well I had to do a couple little coats of it um, and I might even just add a little bit of glue in in here just to kind of keep it steady. So what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of glue in these little spaces here now that everything is kind of where it needs to be. Okay, just to kind of give it a little extra buffer. And 
Oh, that's actually holding. Okay, never mind. I'm not as worried anymore. Maybe I just needed to wait for it to dry a little bit more. I need to practice what I preach with my little ones in being patient for things to dry. So I'm just adding a little bit of a barrier around here with the glue just to just to add a little insurance and help me feel even better. Okay, a little bit more right here. Okay, but it's holding really well, so I'm going to be patient and just let that really set up and then we'll turn it around. So the trick here is going to be to not pull it up right away. So glue it and just kind of take a walk away for a second and let it really set up and then um, just give it time to dry. I think that's what I was doing. I was pulling it up a little too quickly. But that is in there. It's sturdy. Okay, good. Okay, so here it is. I love how it turned out and it looks really good with this nice intentional chunky frame. Um, it definitely looks like something that I would have purchased so I'm really thrilled that I can tell people that I made it myself. So there's so much pride when someone asks you where you bought something and you say actually I made that. So I love I love being able to say that to people. So um, I love how it turned out. I love the chunky frame and I also love the distressed look. It, it turned out really really pretty. I'm not sure if that is showing as well on camera but in person it's super Super pretty and I love how the HTV um, worked perfectly with the mini easy press onto the canvas it just looks great and I think it's gonna hold up much better than vinyl or adhesive vinyl would in a bathroom so if you guys enjoyed this please give me a thumbs up let me know what you guys are crafting by leaving me a comment um, let me know what you're up to I always tell you guys especially since we're all doing our little safe at home order um, this is kind of my social hour so make sure you pop in and say hi and tell me what you're up to and if you guys have any requests on what you guys want to see coming up, last night I sat down and did my entire May content calendar and we have some really fun things coming up. I'm really excited. Plus I got a lot of things in the mail. It's been a very happy mail time. So um, I'll do a couple unboxing things as well um, coming up in May. So let me know if you guys are curious about seeing anything specific. And if you're new here, I'd love if you'd subscribe so you could stick around and see what's coming to the craft table next. All right, everyone, I hope you have a good week and I will see you in the next video.